John, great to uh, meet you. Uh, and in fact, I went back to some of your old interviews and looked at what you were talking about. And uh, the last time we talked to you, we were talking about the Benjamin Lamarche project and you were awaiting drill results. I presume you've got those now. How'd you do? Yeah, so um, many of the drill results are, are out. Um, we should have our final drill results out here in the next little while as we've indicated to the market. And then after that, we're moving directly into a mineral resource estimate and a PA both uh, by the end of the year. So what you've seen um, so far um, in the drill results, there was drill results on this property in 2023. They were they were small, but they indicated to us that you know there was substantial uh, phosphate horizon. So we've we drilled another 25,000 meters this year. Uh, it was about a five to six million dollar drill program. There are three main zones. It's almost like a two to three kilometer strike zone, if you will. It's hard to co compare these things to gold. Um, they're they're it's almost like gravel, uh, and it's on surface. Um, and it's, you know, it's obviously much more valuable than gravel, not as valuable as gold. So you got to find these things on surface and you got to find them in long strikes. And so we have about a two to three kilometer um, strike zone. And there's three main areas. There's a, what we call the phosphate mountain zone, which is a mountain, which has got phosphate in it, lots of phosphate. And then there's a Northern zone and then there's an entire Southern zone. Um, so basically uh, we've got results for all three. The mountain zone is showing some exceptional levels of phosphate. You know, somewhere between the eight and ten percent uh, grades, which is you know up there with some of the largest igneous phosphate mines in the world. Um, there's only a few, mostly in Russia, so we're hitting those kind of grades. Um, as you get into the northern zone, again, very very high um, uh, grading, and then as you get into the uh, southern zone, it sort of tapers off a bit. The lowest it gets is down to six percent, which is still very high. Um, it's you know as as high as you get in 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 the area of uh, of uh, Saguenay Lac Saint Jean, and it makes for for a very large resource. So right now all those drill results are in. Uh, we're just processing them, and we hope to have you know, our final results out to market here uh, very shortly. We're very happy with it. Um, you know I think you know in this country um, we're 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 always tainted by gold exploration. We know that we know that very very well. So when we go into gold exploration, we're always looking for you know. Or a high grade, large resource, and it doesn't matter where it is because, you know, um, in terms of geography, because gold, gold can be transported. But what we have here is we have, a, you know, an industrial mineral and it, you know, it's about $500 US per ton. So, you know, you got to be close to infrastructure. So what's the, what is really special about this resource we have at Bezier and Lamars, uh, this developing resource is that it's, you know, 40 kilometers from the town of Alma. It's 70 kilometers from the deep sea port of Saguenay. It's, it's in an area where Rio Tinto has been based and the entire forestry industry of Quebec has been based for the last 50 years. So the logistics are all there. Like the other day I was on site, I was giving a, um, a presentation for the National Battery and Metals Association on site, you know, full coverage, three bars on cell phone. Um, I mean, the, the, the logistical um, the, the, the placement of this deposit could not have been better. It's about 10 kilometers from uh, two towns that are now, uh, you know, uh, devitalized because the forestry industry is dying in Quebec, and they're bad. They're badly looking for a, a, a new um, a new way of life, a, a new project. And so we're, we're in a perfect area with a lot of skilled labor. Um, you know, a, a very strong developing resource, high grades and, and great logistics, which is what it's all about. So ex extremely excited with the way this drill program has gone from all of those directions, which really makes it. I assume, it the, I assume you're still on track for your preliminary economic assessment by the end of the year. But what does this all do for your uh, open pit mine timeline, if you will? Yeah, we're still on track. We hope, uh, you know, if, if all the stars align perfectly for a 2028, 2029, uh, you know, opening of, of, of the mine, an open pit mine. Um, I know that's fairly aggressive. It's very aggressive that, you know, everything has to line up so far. So good though. Uh, we're on track with our mineral resource estimate, uh, which should be out, uh, you know, Q3 and our, uh, and our PA, which should be out uh, Q4. Um, and then after that, we'd be looking at, you know, getting into uh, feasibility studies uh, early next year. Okay. Your press releases of late have talked about working with the indigenous community in the area, which is great. Things like sustainability and, and so on. But I also saw something in one of the press releases talking about a wind turbine project in the area. How does that affect your business? Yeah, so, you know, our, our relationship with, with the Indigenous PAD is, uh, you know, it's not an, an IBA. It's, it's, it's not sort of those old school type of uh, methods of working with Indigenous groups. It's, it's a, you know, it's a real partnership. It's a real form of collaboration. Um, they've given us access to to to, to their industrial lands. They've, they they we've given them access to come in and become full partners, equity partners in all aspects of our project moving forward. Uh, you know we have you know um, you know very detailed uh, economic meetings with them almost monthly now. 
Um, so it's all about, you know, getting this project going and, 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 and getting, you know, getting it, getting to a, to a real strong partnership base. Um, now they have also done something that's, you know, amazing, uh, came out in the press about uh, two weeks ago, Hydro Quebec and Mastoyash are in this, in our indigenous partner, along with another indigenous group are moving, are moving forward or have signed a, an agreement to produce 2,500 megawatts of power in the saguenay lac saint jean area of Quebec, which would represent 500 wind turbines at about, you know, 50 to hundred kilometers from our mine site. Um, this would be the second largest wind project in the world after the the larger the larger one in China, um, and you know all all those wind projects and solar projects, they produce energy when when there when there is wind and when there is sun, and they all have a very large battery component to them, and all those batteries are LFP batteries, and we're going to have a mine at about fifty to hundred kilometers from from this project. I mean, we we could be busy with you know producing the 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 LFP cam, the LFP batteries, um, you know supplying in all of our waste rock, everything from our mine into building out that project. And we wouldn't have to work for anybody else, um, you know, for the rest of the existence of this project. That's how big that is. It's a $9 billion uh, Canadian project. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a record, it's a record setting um, project size. People say, well, there's problems financing it. You know, the ethical funds and anything that's indigenous finance nowadays, I've heard some of these projects for million, a billion, two billion, three billion being sold out in a matter of minutes. Everybody wants to get in on these power projects. So, I mean, this is, this is, you know, it, it couldn't have happened better for us. Um, and it's going to pull our project along as well. You know, it's interesting you talk about these lithium uh, iron phosphate LFP uh, uh, batteries and the use of it for a hydro project. So it's a built in offtake opportunity, isn't it? Yeah. So you see, you know, some of the, what's happened with a lot of these projects is even back in the days, you know, uh, Quebec Hydro used to have a lot of excess power, so they would export it. Um, now Quebec Hydro is having problems because of water levels and dams. So they've already signed off those offtakes to the U S and they have to continue to provide that, that, that energy under, under offtake and they don't have any left for themselves. So, you know, you kind of get screwed if you want to use that word that way. You know, if you look at a, a, a state like California, what they were doing is they were exporting all of their ener excess energy from wind and solar to, to Nevada. But what they do now is they store it. So when they have excess uh, electricity, they store it in batteries and lithium iron phosphate batteries. So it's like the battery is like you export the energy to yourself to then redeploy it when you need it in your, in your, uh, in your peak hours. So, I mean, on, on a, on a, on a project like that in Saguenay Lac Saint Jean, I mean, it's all going to be about when the wind is blowing. I mean, it blows quite often, but it's going to be about, you know, ma managing that energy and helping the, Quebec hydro, the hydro grid across North America balance that energy. And it's all going to be about batteries. Like it's coming and it's coming like a tidal wave and no, no one has, I don't know. The markets are so cynical right now. Nobody seems to see past this, but wait until the market gets a hold of that. Yeah. No kidding. Phosphate will become the new gold. John, thanks so much. Thank you so much, Pat. Really appreciate your time. No problem.